Hey, Rainmaker 201 podcast. How you guys doing, Mad Lab Nation? Greg Mack here. Uh, hope you're having a great Monday. Had a great Easter weekend. Had a chance to relax and take it easy with family and friends. But we're back to work. And so uh, in continuance of what we talked about in the last podcast, and we're looking a little bit at the Rainmaker 301 program and team building and what team is and what's the difference between team and group and chaos, right, uh, and mobs. Um, one of the things that struck struck me about looking at that and, and discussing that at the individual level of a team member working within a team is not just the, the comfort zone of the team and what the team can do, um, which is built on the, the accumulative or aggregate comfort zones of the individual team members. And I just wanted to go into a little bit about uh, this idea of comfort zones and what they are, it has a lot to do with uh, the selling interviewing process. Uh, one of the most um, important things and issues I see in regards to sales training uh, and development is the comfort zone of the individual in reaching out to strangers and talking to people in their community that they don't know, uh, let alone following up leads from emails and texts and website inquiries walk-ins, things like that. And there's something unique about this part of the process uh, that really uh, limits most of the potential that I see people have in terms of building a successful and healthy practice. And this comfort zone idea really started uh, back in some classical experiments by Dr. Uh, Yerkes and Dodson back in the early 1900s. Uh, ended up with the results of their research, you know, being called the Yerkes Yerkes Dodson Law, which is this idea of the state of relative comfort um, where somebody produces a steady level of performance, whatever that might be. Uh, and they're looking at maximizing performance uh, versus uh, under performers and how, how that works psychoemotionally. And, and they you know talked about this as a state of relative anxiety, a, a space where our stress levels are slightly higher than normal. So it looks like if you really want to, you know, have high performance levels, you got to be bumping up against the edges of your comfort zones um, so that you're more aroused and and focused because of being at the edge or boundary of a comfort zone. And, and they call this optimal anxiety, an interesting uh, phrase there. Um, which is just at the edge or, or right at our comfort zones. And what they found in their research was, of course, is an inverted U or Gaussian distribution. Uh, too much anxiety and, and stress, and that's counterproductive. And not enough stimulation and stress and anxiety that's healthy called U stress. And, you know, you don't get much done either. And so uh, this is relative to the complexity of the task. And we're not just talking about the physical complexity, we're talking about uh, the psychological complexity and the emotional component of that uh, when trying to execute a task, especially a new one. And so um, modern day times define this as, as a psychological state in which things are very familiar to a person and they're at ease and, and at least think and feel like they're in control of their environment. And so they're experiencing lower levels of, of anxiety and stress and in this zone you know, relatively steady levels of performance are possible. Uh, what's often referred to as an anxiety neutral position. And so in the Rainmaker system, uh, if you've taken the course and you recall from I think, section two of the manual, uh, that particular module, we talked about um, comfort zones being plus or minus one of their identity ranking of the individual, which is a reflection of self-esteem and self-image based on a kind of a rough one to 10 psychometric self-ranking scale. And so it's kind of like psycho-emotional homeostasis. And so from a psychological standpoint, your comfort zone is, is like an artificial mental boundary within which you maintain a sense of security. And when you get out of it, you experience discomfort, sometimes paralyzing discomfort. And so for the most part, you're each of us have a comfort zone that's built from and extends from our self-image and how we think and expect things to go. 
And so, you know, it's interesting to figure out kind of where does the comfort zone come from? Because apparently each of us is equipped with one and they're different for each of us as different as we are as people. And what are the boundaries of the, of the zone itself? And these are perceived and real uh, sources of anxiety and fear, uh, you know, which in economic theory, and we've talked about this before, is uncertainty. And so comfort zones are built from the past and the notions of, of risk and reward and risk and penalty um, focus us on the future because that's where uncertainty is, is in the future. And so what, for most humans, do you think is the most important thing about being alive and being with other humans? It, apparently, uh, intrinsically, axiomatically, um, our psychoemotional health tends to come from acceptance from being liked by other people at some, at some level. And so this probably has its genesis in, you know, the early caretaker maternal paternal relationship experiences of, of early childhood. And so comfort zones are intensely personal and, and unique to each of us. Um, but there are some pretty common themes, at least, you know, in sales training and, and working in teams and team performance processes um, that, that seem to be consistent uh, amongst the population. And one of those is like, for instance, speaking in front of groups of people. I still think when you ask uh, a bunch of people on the street, you know, what puts the fear of God in them, uh, speaking in front of people is just real scary for a lot of people. And why do you think that is? What is it about, you know, getting up and standing in front of, you know, several people, 8, 10, 12 people who are all looking at you, and you start talking? Well, what's going on there that makes that so horrifying and scary? <clears throat> As an adult, how, how do you know that another person or group of people has accepted you? What are the cues that you're taking to go, ah, they like me? They accept me. And, and how do you know that you've been rejected? How, how do you decide, you know, oh, they don't like me very much. Or they don't accept me. And what happens to you internally when you start getting out of your comfort zone and you start stretching your psycho-emotional homeostasis, right? And in physiological terms, this is called allostasis. And so... When do you know what's going on inside of you? The internal self-talk, maybe it manifests somatically in terms of being flushed in the face, um, shaking, uh, eye contact changes, all kinds of things start to give away uh, the fact that each of us might be coming out of our comfort zones. And why would we need to move out of our comfort zones? Why not just stay there all the time because it's so comfy and warm and toasty? Right? Why do we why do we bother even talking about challenging or our boundaries associated with comfort zones? Right? Right? We we talk about it idealistically as, as the only way you're gonna get better, that you're gonna change, that you're gonna improve in some way. And if not, you'll stay the same. I guess if you're happy with the, the way you are psychologically, academically, physically, emotionally, however that is, and you've taken full stock of that, and you said I'm just planting my stakes right here, and I'm not moving from this. Okay, that's fine. But by golly, if, if you want to change and improve and grow as a human, apparently uh, we've got to push these comfort zone boundaries. And if you want to work within a team of people who all have their own little unique comfort zones that they bring to the team, uh, we got to get to know and respect and honor these comfort zones, but also realize when we need to push and when we need to pull back so that we can stay in that optimal level of, of anxiety, if you will, that you stress that keeps us focused um, and helps us to grow and move forward individually um, and, and as a team, because the team can't grow and move forward if none of the team members want to grow and move forward at the individual level because of comfort zone problems. Now, look, you're in the people business, and, and you need to be in professional relationships with other humans. Uh, and, and the competition for the attention of the humans in your community is, is so intense, it's almost absurd. 
it's overwhelming how many people are competing for the attention and acceptance of uh, the people in your community from a customer um, product service provider relationship perspective. And if you want to succeed in your practice, uh, you need to be talking to people. That's all there is to it. If, if you don't want to talk to people, you will not be successful. You will not grow. You will not expand um, in your business. You won't. That's it. You won't. And if you're okay with that, you don't probably need to be listening to this podcast. You can hang up right now and turn me off and say, ah, Mac, you know, I'm good. Great. But if you're not, and you're sitting there wondering, what the heck's going on? How come I'm not growing personally? How come I'm not growing professionally? How come my practice isn't moving forward? How come I don't have a book of business of high quality relationships with other people in my community? Well, we may want to look at this comfort zone thing. If your team isn't functioning properly, you may need to start looking at each other's individual comfort zones and figure out what's going on there. So I got to ask you, what makes you so anxious about talking to strangers? What, what do you what do you fear will happen? What is the anxiety or the uncertainty about the future? Right, that they will some stranger you've never met or talked to before is not going to like you because you're trying to talk to them about what you do and sell them something, and so they're not going to like and accept you, and you're so afraid of this that you simply won't even initiate a professional proper sales transaction or interview process because you want to be accepted by them. Thinking that if you just appease everything that they want, that they're going to like you and give you money and then be in a high quality relationship. I got to tell you, this doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. That's not reality. It's not. And, and if you want a business of nothing but, you know, you're working with your friends um, okay, but I'd be real careful about that because that has its own set of pitfalls associated with it. Many of you know this already, don't you? You know it already. When you get too friendly or you're working with friends and family, what happens after a while? It's a different dynamic. Now, you're doing this already because what's your role as a coach? As a coach, are you trying to keep your, your clients in their current comfort zones physically, psychologically, emotionally? Do you need them to, to move out of their comfort zones so that they can get the, the changes they, they've hired you for? Right? Of course, you're already doing this to other people in, in the professional relationships you have now. The question is, can you do it with yourself? Who's helping you get you out of your comfort zones? from a professional development perspective. Mad Lab's trying to do it. That's why you're on board with them. And maybe they're asking you to do things. Your imps are asking you to do things. I'm asking you to do things. The Mac, um, the monthly Macs are asking you to do things. And the Rainmaker, they're trying to, and you're not comfortable with, and you feel anxious about. And so you just want to click, turn those things off right away, because that's just too, too anxiety inducing and fear producing. This is a problem. It's a problem for you. And I'm not sure how to how to help you with it, except to start to have you look at some self-reflection, pull some people around you that, that you trust and say, hey, where am I stuck? Because if it's talking to people and you're afraid that if you start being a salesperson, I keep using air quotes because I hate the word salesperson, but that's just the way we uh, have to label it at this point, is I want you to go out and just meet people without any agenda other than saying hello so that you can start overcoming this incredible fear or anxiety of talking to someone that you've never met before while you're in line at Starbucks, sitting at a table in the restaurant, standing in line waiting to get something and just saying hello and initiating a small hello conversation so you can get over a little bit at a time so it doesn't become so stress producing that it shuts you down. And then starting to learn the techniques. That's what the Rainmaker 201 program is trying to equip you to. Because when we're talking about task difficulty as part of the anxiety-inducing distress um, that helps somebody shut down and roll back into their comfort zone, uh, you need skills. You need to know what to say. You need to know what not to say. And this is what Rainmaker 201 helps you do. And what Rainmaker 301 does for teams is to help you function at a higher level and push each other in a healthy way 
because conflict can be healthy if it's structured properly and you're sensitive to comfort zones so that everybody can grow and learn and get into that app optimal anxiety state and become high producers and performers so that you can meet your personal and company goals. And so that's what we're trying to do at Mad Lab in general. It's what the Rainmaker 201 and 301 programs are trying to do. So I hope uh, maybe this message struck a chord with you. Maybe not. Um, if it did, uh, let's get you out of your comfort zone as soon as possible and figure out which parts of you um, are a little too comfy and that's actually holding you back uh, from you achieving your professional objectives.